It was the kind of December night when the cold gets into your bones. The traffic along Jefferson Davis Highway in Woodbridge, Virginia, slowed as the clock pushed toward midnight. At a Chevron gas station, a woman in her 50s was working alone, closing out the day's register, counting bills by the buzz of tired lights. Routine, quiet, until she stepped away for a moment. The restroom was set apart from the main store, down a corridor where shadows crowded the corners. She thought she was alone, but she wasn't. A man followed her inside, a knife glinted, and in a matter of seconds, the ordinary rhythms of a working night became a nightmare that would echo for decades. Today we are talking about a revolutionary breakthrough in DNA technology. For the first time ever, an identical twin accused of murder has been separated by DNA from his identical twin. This is important and it shows the way DNA technology is improving and progressing in leaps and bounds. I'm Stacy Lee. Let's begin. To tell this story, we have to talk about two brothers, identical twins, two men with the same face, the same DNA, and for years, the same shield against justice. Their names, Russell Anthony Marubio and John Arthur Marubio. Born in the late 1960s, the twins grew up together in a modest Virginia household. From the beginning, they were close, but not indistinguishable in personality. Neighbors remember two boys with dark hair and sharp eyes, mischievous at times, but also inseparable, like many twins. They rode bikes down suburban streets, swapped identities to confused teachers, and fought the way brothers always fight. But beneath the surface, their paths began to diverge. John grew up into a man who stayed out of the spotlight, living an ordinary life in Florida. Russell, however, harbored darker currents. Friends describe him as volatile, angrier, and prone to reckless choices. He had brushes with the law as a young man, small offenses, the kind that vanish into paperwork, but his potential for violence showed itself early. For identical twins, DNA was once thought to be an unbreakable bond. They were genetic mirrors of each other, indistinguishable under any microscope. In the 1980s, that fact would become Russell's cloak. Now let's step back into the Chevron station. The victim was 50 years old, known in the neighborhood as dependable, hardworking, and kind. She had no connection to her attacker, no warning that she was about to be pulled into the kind of violence that changes everything. When the man followed her into the restroom, the knife was the first thing she saw. Then came the tape. He bound her hands, covered her head, smothering light and air. She was dragged, pushed, made into prey. He raped her brutally, a violation that lasted minutes but probably felt like an eternity. And when he was done, he left her there, bound, taped, and terrified. She somehow found the strength to free herself, to stagger back toward help, and she survived. But survival doesn't always mean escape, not when your body carries evidence, not when your mind replays every second. Police responded quickly. The crime was treated with seriousness. They secured the scene, collected fingerprints, swabbed for fluids. The victim underwent an invasive forensic exam, yielding a physical evidence recovery kit, a perk. It contained the attacker's DNA, preserved in vials, sealed in envelopes, cataloged and stored. At the time, DNA analysis was in its infancy. Virginia labs could extract a profile, but without a national database, without comparison tools, it meant little. They knew her attacker was male. They had his genetic blueprint, but they couldn't name him. And so, in 1987, the file went cold almost as soon as it was opened. The woman returned to work. Her life demanded it, but she carried trauma that never fully left. Each night she walked into that gas station. She remembered the tape on her skin, the sound of the knife scraping against the wall. She never saw his face clearly. She never heard his name. 
All she had was the knowledge that he was still out there. Russell Marubio, meanwhile, moved on. For years, he lived free. He relocated eventually to Florida, and he blended in. His twin, John, lived an ordinary life alongside him, building his own path. Neither man was pursued because the science couldn't distinguish them, even if the police had caught them. Eventually, the brothers were uncovered. And imagine the irony. Every time that DNA profile was run, it pointed to both brothers, not one, not none, both. And in a courtroom, that was as good as an alibi. Back in Virginia, detectives cycled through assignments, cold cases stacked on shelves, but evidence never disappeared. And in that perk kit, sealed and waiting, Russell's DNA lay dormant, like a message in a bottle, waiting for science to catch up. In 2019, more than 30 years after the attack, two detectives picked up the file again. Giannina Panetto, a veteran with more than two decades of experience, and Colleen Grantham, equally seasoned, joined the cold case unit. They specialized in sexual assaults and violent crime. They knew DNA had changed everything. So they reopened the Chevron gas station file. They requested the evidence. They sent the samples to modern labs, and the DNA came back strong. The profile was confirmed. It was a man's, just as before, but now technology could run it through genealogical databases seeking family connections. And that's when the names surfaced, the Marubio twins. Both men matched. Both men were living in Florida. Both were given cheek swabs, and both produced identical results. The science had advanced, but not far enough. Once again, the case hit a wall. The victim, now in her 80s, was contacted again. She had lived nearly four decades without answers, and now detectives were telling her they knew the family of the man who attacked her, but they couldn't say which brother. The cruelty of that moment cannot be overstated. Justice was close enough to touch, but still out of reach. And the victim must have been so frustrated to know that the cops knew one of these guys was her attacker, but they couldn't tell which one. For investigators, it was infuriating. They had the truth in hand, but not in a form a jury could accept. They needed something new, something beyond conventional DNA. And this is where science enters like a character in its own right. Because in 2022... Research at Parabon Nanolabs, we've talked about them so many times, working with forensic genealogist Cece Moore, we've talked about her, offered a solution that had never before been tried in a U.S. criminal courtroom, ultra-deep whole genome sequencing. But we'll save the science for later, because before the courtroom, before the conviction, we have to sit with the crime itself. A woman bound and brutalized in the back of a gas station restroom. A town that forgot the file but never erased the fear. And a man who lived free for 37 years because his DNA had a twin. The year was 2019 when detectives Giannina Panetto and Colleen Grantham picked up the Chevron rape file again. Three decades plus had passed since that December night. They weren't rookies chasing glory. They were seasoned investigators, women who had made careers digging through trauma, carrying the voices of survivors who had been ignored for too long. They started at the perk kit, sealed since 1987, and saw not just evidence, but possibility. Science had leapt forward. They knew genealogical databases could do things the original detectives never dreamed of. They also knew the victim, now an elderly woman, deserved to see the system try one more time. The detectives sent the evidence to modern labs, and when the report came back, it wasn't vague. The DNA profile was solid. The genealogical matches were strong. The family tree pointed clearly to two men, Russell and John Marubio. And at first that felt like a victory. They had names, living men, one of whom was the attacker. But the celebration was short-lived because the brothers were identical twins. DNA testing of the time and of the last 30 years could not separate them. Every cheek swab, every standard analysis came back identical. For the victim, it was salt in the wound. Investigators could tell her the man who raped her had been found, but they couldn't tell her which brother. And in a courtroom, that distinction mattered more than anything else. 
So for a time, it seemed like the case would stall again. And that's when they called in Cece Moore, the genetic genealogist famous for cracking cold cases. She and her colleagues at Parabon Nano Labs suggested a radical approach, not just sequencing the usual stretches of DNA, but sequencing all of it, every base pair, all three billion letters of the genetic code. It is unfathomable to me. You always think of a billion being like kind of more than a million. No. If this is a million, this is a billion. It is a huge difference. The technique called ultra-deep whole genome sequencing was not common in forensic labs. It is expensive, complicated, and time-consuming, but it offered something ordinary DNA couldn't, the ability to spot somatic mutations. Somatic mutations are the quirks of biology, the tiny typos in DNA that arise after an embryo splits into two. Identical twins share the same starting script, but as their cells divide, mistakes creep in. One twin might carry eight or ten changes, tiny substitutions at random places that the other does not. These differences are invisible to conventional testing, but if you can find them, you can separate one twin from another. You guys know I am fascinated with this stuff. I am not an expert on it at all, but I love learning about it. The detectives pressed forward. In August 2022, samples were sent for sequencing. Crime scene DNA preserved in that 1987 kit was compared against fresh cheek swabs from both twins. Scientists combed through billions of base pairs, scanning for differences. The results came back clear. Out of billions of letters, eight tiny differences marked Russell as distinct from John. Eight out of billions. And the DNA recovered from the victim's body all those years ago, it carried Russell's mutations. He could no longer hide behind his twin. The trial that followed was more than a prosecution. It was a history lesson in science, a courtroom experiment where jurors became students of genetics. Prosecutors laid out the story of the crime, reminding the jury of the victim's suffering, the knife, the tape, the trauma carried for decades. Then they called the scientists. One after another, experts from Parabon and affiliated labs explained the process. They spoke of the genome as a book with three billion letters. Identical twins, they said, start with the same edition. But if you examine the text word by word, page by page, you will find small typos, mutations that distinguish them. Jurors leaned forward as charts were displayed, highlighting the eight mutations that belonged only to Russell. The defense tried to sow doubt, arguing the science was too new too untested, but the experts countered with precision. These were validated differences, reproducible, and enough to identify one man over his brother. For the victim, sitting in the courtroom nearly four decades older than the night she was attacked, the trial was a crucible. She listened as her pain was retold, as strangers spoke the details of her violation. But she also listened as scientists gave her attacker a name, one that could no longer be blurred by shared DNA. In August 2025, the jury returned a verdict. Guilty. Russell Anthony Marubio, 54, was convicted of rape and abduction. His bond was revoked immediately, and he now awaits sentencing. Moving to some more top headlines tonight, DNA evidence helps a Prince William County jury convict a Florida man for a cold case rape and abduction in the 1980s. 50-year-old Russell Marubio was found guilty of raping a Chevron Station employee in Woodbridge in 1987. Advanced DNA technology and genetic genealogy analysis helped determine that Marubio was the suspect, even separating his DNA from his twin brothers. It's the first time that's ever happened in a U.S. court case. Marubio will be sentenced on November 7th. The aftermath carried shockwaves. For the victim, it was a release. 
37 years after being brutalized in a gas station bathroom, she finally heard a courtroom confirm what she had always known. She had been violated, but she hadn't been forgotten. For the investigators, it was vindication. Detectives Pinedo and Grantham cried quietly as the verdict was read. Forensic scientists who had preserved the sample in 1987 felt their patience validated. And C.C. Moore called it one of the most meaningful cases of her career, proof that science could bend time to deliver justice. For the innocent twin, John, it was a relief. For years, he could have lived under suspicion. Every time the DNA profile was run, it pointed to him as much as it pointed to Russell. Now, for the first time, science cleared his name. The same technology that condemned his brother exonerated him. And for the legal system, it was precedent. No longer could identical twins hide behind biology. Now, the implications stretch beyond this one crime. Across the country, cold case files contain DNA profiles linked to identical twins. Some are unsolved murders, others are rapes, others assaults, where a conviction stalled because the evidence couldn't specify which twin was the perpetrator. Now, with ultra-deep sequencing, those files can be reopened. It's amazing. Of course, questions remain. This technology is costly, requiring advanced labs and expert analysis. Who will pay for it? Which cases will qualify? And beyond the courtroom, some ask, how far should we go in sequencing entire genomes? What happens to privacy when every base pair can be scanned, logged, and sorted? But in the Marubio case, the answer feels simple. Science served justice. And let's not lose sight of the heart of the story, the victim. She was a woman who walked into work on a winter night in 1987 and walked out never the same. She was brutalized, humiliated, and left bound in a restroom. And she lived through 37 years of waiting, 37 years of asking if the man who raped her would ever be caught, 37 years of carrying a secret no one could carry for her. When the verdict was read, she wept, not because it erased the past, it never could, but because it finally acknowledged her truth. Russell Marubio now sits in a Virginia jail cell awaiting sentencing. He is no longer shielded by time or by genetics. The very genetics that once protected him, shared DNA with his twin, was turned against him by science sharp enough to pierce its veil. His sentencing is scheduled for November 7th, 2025, where Judge Kimberly A. Irving will decide his fate. He faces decades in prison. The Marubio case is more than a crime story. It is a milestone. It tells us that time does not always protect the guilty, that science can be relentless, patient, and eventually decisive, and that even the smallest genetic differences, the kind we once thought invisible, can be enough to change everything. For the victim, it was justice delayed but not denied. For science, it is proof that there are no perfect alibis, not even the accident of being born a twin. And for all of us, it is a reminder. The truth may wait years, decades, lifetimes, but sometimes with enough persistence, it finds its way back. Thanks for joining me today on Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. I hope you are as excited about this as I am. I love my little fellow true crime nerds. <laughs> this is my podcast. It's on Apple and Spotify. I post on Mondays and Wednesdays. And this is our own fundraiser. We raise money to donate to police departments that have cold case DNA in storage that's never been tested because it's too expensive. We're very close to reaching our first goal. We're going to vote on a case. We're going to donate the money to get that DNA kit tested. And we might help solve a cold crime. If you watch that video on my channel, it will tell you how you can donate. I sure appreciate each and every one of you, and I thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. Stay safe, my friends, and be kind to each other, and I will see you next time on Dark Hearts with Stacey Lee. Bye.